glove. Joe Knight now chopping at the back of the head for Tommy Roberts. on the attack. Tommy Roberts leads out with a straight left. from Joe Knight. <laughs> End of round one. <laughs> Billy Smith, John McColl in the corner of Tommy Roberts. Joe Knight paces, paces the ring, just awaiting the bell for the beginning of round two. Seconds down. Round two. from Tommy Roberts. Four left hands that time. Four scoring punches. Another left lead from Tommy Roberts. Joe Knight attempted the overhand right. Not enough power in it. Left leads. Right hand then from Roberts. Another right hand just clipped the chin of Joe Knight. body punches from both boys then. <laughs> End of round two. <laughs> Seconds down. Three. Round three. time from Joe Knight but Tommy Roberts comes back with left leads into the face of Joe Knight
combination from Joe Knight that time. just slipped his head under that left hook from Tommy Roberts. Joe Knight switches his attack to the body. End of round three. Seconds down. Round four. hands Tommy Roberts Joe Knight trying to balk as Roberts come in with a left lead Again with the left lead, catches Joe Knight. Knight falls in with the right hand, but no effect. <laughs> Roberts again with his left lead. Uppercut that time from Roberts. Joe Knight being told by referee Ray Mitchell to keep his punches to the front part of the head. of round four. In the blue corner of Tommy Roberts, John McColl and Billy Smith. Higgins down. Round five. Tommy Roberts in the white trunks with black band and piping. Good right hand that time from Joe Knight, just caught Tommy Roberts. that lightning fast hand oh good left right combination from Roberts Joe Knight waved his hand it didn't have any effect on him trying to psych up Tommy Roberts trying to psych Tommy Roberts out I don't think it'll work too well Tommy 
Roberts now. Left-right combinations. Joe Knight says it didn't hurt. Good punches from Roberts that time. End of round five. Seconds down. Round six. Could have a cut then from Roberts. Joe Knight comes back with left and rights, but no effect. Oh, good left hook that time. Caught Joe Knight flush on the chin. Right combination from Joe Knight. Left hook that time from Tommy Roberts. Caught Joe Knight coming in. Roberts now on the attack. Big left-right hand combinations from Tommy Roberts. Brilliant straight left hand and lightning fast. Good left hook from Roberts. End of round six. Seconds down. Round seven. Boys just moving around the ring. Tommy Roberts with a left lead. In comes Joe Knight now with left right combinations and an uppercut from Joe Knight. Good straight left from Tommy Roberts, stealing the points from Joe Knight. from Tommy Roberts just fell short Joe Knight rushes in with a left hook but didn't connect Tommy Roberts again with that left hand of his good scoring punches from Tommy Roberts 
End of round seven. Seconds down. Round eight. time with the left hook just caught Tommy Roberts Tommy Roberts comes back with his own left, com left right combination but now it's Joe Knight with a big left hook. Joe Knight signals with his hands that didn't hurt. Oh, good right hand that time. Just grazed the chin. Tommy Roberts signals that didn't touch him. Didn't hurt him. End of round eight. Seconds down. Round nine. Attack. Oh, good left hook from Joe Knight. Tommy Roberts in a bit of trouble, but no, he fights his way out of it. Joe Knight raises his hand. I don't know whether if that was in victory or if he was just trying to get out of the clinch, but Joe Knight in again. Rabbit punch in the back of the head of Tommy Roberts, being cautioned by referee Ray Mitchell. attack not having any effect on Tommy Roberts
last round should be really fast and furious. I think Joe Knight still thinks he still has a chance to take the points away from Tommy Roberts, but at this stage I would say that Tommy Roberts will be a clear leader on points. But then again, that's a job for the referee and the two judges, referee Ray Mitchell, Ray Wheatley and Des Bloyd. down. Tenth and concluding round. Ray Mitchell calls both boys to centre ring to shake hands. Left leads from Tommy Roberts. in hand, left hand of Tommy Roberts still reaches out to the chin of Joe Knight. Good body punch then from Tommy Roberts under the rib cage. Oh, Joe Knight just misses with a right up, a left uppercut. left lead from Tommy Roberts caught Joe Knight. Triple left hand that time from Roberts. definitely stealing the points from Joe Knight. just caught Tommy Roberts from Joe Knight that time. <coughs> End of the contest. <laughs> Both boys think they've won it. I think it will be safe to say that Tommy Roberts a pretty clear winner on points. A close enough fight, but I think Tommy Roberts might have just taken it. Les Hyde just congratulating Tommy Roberts. Just to wait for the referee and judge's decision. One of the judges there tonight, Ray Wheatley. Another judge, Mr. Desmond Bloyd. Seated beside Ned Moss. Referee Ray Mitchell calls both boys to centre ring. <laughs> 94, 98 to Tommy Roberts. 92, Joe Knight. 100, Tommy Roberts. 90 to 99 points from referee Ray Mitchell. Tommy Roberts takes it out on a unanimous decision. Well, that certainly brings the proceedings here at the Marrickville RSL to a close.
another good fight night stage by John McCollum and Bill Laws. My current turn. Former state amateur champion, two wins out of three professional bouts from Liverpool, Rocky Rastuccia. And in the blue corner, scaling 73 kilograms, trained by Les Ida, Les Ida, Jim McBelmore, making a comeback to the ring after a long absence. Formerly from Fiji, now from Belmore, make welcome Joey Knight. The referee, former Australian champion, Mr. Trevor Christian, ring trade judges, Charlie Lucas, yeah. Mick Benetto, Don Marks. Oh, who's that? Patrick. Just an information, ladies and gentlemen, put on by the referee in the boxing authority. If this bout is stopped by a high cut within the first three rounds, the bout is declared a technical draw. The laceration through the eye is sustained within the first three rounds, the bout is a technical draw. <laughs>
second of round five, making a winning return to the ring tonight, Joey Knight. Australia's heaviest hitter. How about that for a record? 19 wins all by way of KO. And Adrian Bellon, the former Australian cruiserweight champion, was on the receiving end on October 23, as was Glenn Fitzpatrick back in June. And Moses Sarovi is an exciting customer. He's quite happy to fight Glenn Kelly. It's been a long time since I spoke to a bunch of people. I'm just here to fight. Tyson has spent much of his life these days defending himself, either to boxing officials as he tried to regain his license, or to judges as he answered assault charges. Are we going to get through here, guys? <laughs> Let him through. Thank you. The rebirth of Tyson as a caring man with a keen sense of community spirit has been stepping up in recent months, all geared towards his comeback as a fighter, a fighter in the ring. I'm not much for talking, but thanks. Um, Y'all guys know what I do. Y'all know what I do. I put people in body bags when I'm right. So we know what's going to happen. And I know you guys don't think he's going to beat me. I, I know you don't think that. Regardless of my layoff, I know no one believes that. But, you know, bye. And what of his opponent, Francois Bolter? A little obscure, but full of confidence. I know some of you probably don't know me, but then the, the ones of you that does know that I come to fight and I don't come to lay down. And that's exactly what I intend to do. And to all the people who want to make deals with Mike, uh, I would suggest that you just hold on, you know, to his deals because you might lose a lot of money. So just uh, hold on a little bit longer. But despite Tyson's best efforts, his dark side always seems to be lurking. He has two assault charges pending. Sentencing is scheduled for February. An appetite for destruction because Moses Sarovi is arguably the biggest hitter in Australia at the moment. And Paul Smallman, well, he did have that record. Some time ago has been in against some big names, as I mentioned. Mark Bajero, the Australian champ. John Mugabe, a technical draw over two rounds. Anthony Bajini. In fact, these men did meet back on Feb 21 last year. And Paul Smallman came up with a third round knockout. But it has to be said since then that Moses Sarovi has certainly improved dramatically. Although Paul Smallman is going to enjoy a large height and reach advantage over Moses Sarovi. Super middleweights.
Moses Sorobi right on the limit and Paul Smallman just a couple of pounds under 166 or 75 and a half kilos Paul Smallman makes his way to set a ring here at the Sydney Entertainment Centre he made his debut back in March 1995 and unbelievably his eardrum was burst for the very first punch of that fight he went on to finish the six rounds but lost the decision but certainly after that he came up with some excellent wins winning his next four fights by way of KO none of them lasting longer than four rounds he's been troubled with hand problems in the past as well because of his power proud representative of Australia as well an amateur level where he won New South Wales and Australian titles at middleweight and 30 victories from 42 starts as an amateur and turned pro after missing the 1994 Commonwealth Games team based his training regime about around the one used by the former world champion Jeff Harding and now Moses Suovi one of the most improved boxers in this country will make his way to centre ring and he's trained not far from the entertainment centre Tony Mundine and Irma Quillen's Jim at Redfern along with former Australian kickboxing world champion Alex Tui and Moses Sorovi's four in 1998 Tweed's four knockout wins none of them have gone longer than three rounds has elevated him into the WBC top 20 at cruiserweight level where he currently holds the OPBF and Australian title he is a most exciting customer his battle with Paul Smallman is coming up next here on Fox it certainly is 10 by 3 minute rounds an international super middleweight contest in the red corner from the central coast he weighed in at 75.55 kilograms. He is wearing white trunks, black trim. His record, nine wins, five losses, one draw, six wins via way of knockout. Paul Smallman. In the blue corner, originally from Fiji, he weighed in at 76.2 kilograms. He is wearing black and gold. His impressive record, 19 wins, nine losses, one draw, 19 wins via way of knockout. Moses Sorovi. The third man in the ring is Mr. Charlie Lucas. The judges at ringside, Brian McMahon, Gary Dean and Gary Lowe. Okay, come over. Okay, boys, I want a good, clean fight, no nonsense. The event of a knockdown, standing boxer, go to that corner there, the one behind me, stay there, I'll tell you to come out. If I say stop or break, you must stop punching, step back and keep your hands up. Okay, ten rounds, shake hands. You all right, Brian? Yes, as right, I mentioned, guys? when I last met, it was a knockout win for Paul Smallman in the third, although Sorovi did have Smallman down in the opening round in that fight, so stand by for action here as two of the biggest hitters in Australia go at it. Super middleweight level, 12 stone in the old language, Paul Smallman in the white trunks against Moses Sorovi, the current Australian cruiserweight champion, the current OPBF champion, the current OBA light heavyweight champion. He has racked up some impressive performances so far in 1998 and looking to finish here in good style. Hasn't he? He's going to get a standing eight count here on Moses Sorovi. He's hit with a short right end from Smallman. Smallman loading up here on Moses Sorovi. Smallman is trying Sorovi. too hard. He's trying too hard. Just relax. Knockdown coming from a nice right hand. Just relax and uh, let it happen again. Again, the overhand right from Smallman as he works the body as well. He's is in some trouble here. Hit with another big right hand. And Charlie Lucas is going to wave this away. Well, Moses Sorovi is out and Thank finished you. here in the opening round as Paul Smallman comes up with a shock victory here in the opening round. A very quick finish, and Paul Smallman is all smiles. The doctor has arrived and has dispensed the medicine. Well, that's exciting stuff from Paul Smallman. The PABA super middleweight champion, all guns blazing knockout victory here in the opening round
Well, extraordinary. What a finish. And Moses Sarovi has his problems in the blue corner. Andy Raymond is getting set for the official announcement. Let's have a look at the knockdown before we get there, however. This was the first, and there was the right hand from Smallman. That was the first knockdown. Initially, I thought it was a slip when they became entangled, but it was obvious it was the right hand. And again, it was the right. And Sarovi wasn't with us after that. And was in danger of suffering some heavy punishment. And Charlie Lucas, for the second time tonight, has to step in and wave it away. And I don't think there's any doubt that he made the right decision there. Moses Sarovi unable to defend himself. And after knocking out four opponents so far this year, he is on the receiving end from Paul Smallman. who I mentioned, knocked him out in three rounds back in Feb last year. Well, Excellent no need fight. for the judges there. Let's Excellent get a word. Next Paul Smallman, here he is with Andy Raymond. Yeah, thank you very much, John Casey. No need for the judges there. Fissa Dynamite, well done, Paul Smallman. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Um, I was very happy with that. You know, I'm telling you, one round, so, you know, they're the fights we like. And um, I try and prepared very hard for that, you know, six weeks. And, um, I, you know, it took me a while to get my weight right. But, you know, I felt very strong tonight. And, um, you know, I just want to keep going and go up now and um, challenge for a world title, hopefully in the next 18 months. Where to from here? World title is everyone's dream. What, what are the logical stepping stones as far as Australia then, then globally? Well, um, I'd love Australian title, but um, that's why I've come back down to Sydney. You know, I've challenged John Mugabe three times, you know, for a rematch. And, um, you know, John doesn't want to come to the party anymore. So, because I had such a tough fight with him last time, you know. So, um, Mate, there was no second guessing the game plan tonight, was there? Oh, well, you know, I know Moses has got um, dynamite in his hands, but, um, you know, I, I understand I can take a good punch too, and, you know, and I can give one, so, you know, it helps so much. I'm not going to argue with you. Well done. Thank you. Thanks very much. Paul Smallman there, victorious. Well, the heavyweight di division is creating more news globally. Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield go at it at New York's Madison Square Garden to determine just who is the king of the ring. It was more like a fashion show, a concert and a party than a press conference. But that's Don King. The most controversial figure in boxing is the promoter of perhaps the most important night in the sport of the decade. For the first time since 1992, an undisputed and united heavyweight champion will be crowned. Lennox Lewis, the WBC champ, faces WBA and IBF belt holder Evander Holyfield at a venue all agree is the only place worthy of the fight. This is a great coming together at Madison Square Garden, the temple of boxing in the Mecca in New York. The city was so great they named it twice, New York, New York. And so you must understand that when you look at this fight, you're not just looking at a prize fight, you are being a part of history. This is for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. This is what I've uh, started boxing for, and this is, this is basically my goal and uh, something I've dreamt about and my aspiration, my dreams, everything coming into one. It's the knowledge. We, we know that it's who can affect it, use what they have to work for them. You know, I have a lot of knowledge and I have wisdom, which is the principal thing uh, the reason why I'm successful. Regardless of just who walks away with the championship belt, both fighters will be winners at the bank. Holyfield will earn almost $30 million, Lewis 13. The winner emerging as the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Two men will settle the feud. Love more Nadu. 21 wins, two losses, 13 KOs. Justin Russell, undefeated, 27 wins and 20 KOs. Uncivil War, big time boxing. And one of their baby daughters, smile on her face at the moment. And a big moment in the sporting career of Love Mourn Do. To all our viewers on Fox Sports and also through Foxtel, at your favourite pub or club, wherever you may be joining us, including... All the boys down at my local at the Waterloo Cup Hotel, the banks of the Maribyrnong there in Melbourne. Stand by for what should be an outstanding fight. And this is what happened at today's weigh-in as reported by Tim Wharton. 
Ever since the fight was announced last month, there's been one farce after another. And today was no different. Justin Roussel's trainer, Jeff Fennick, at one stage refusing to wait for Love Mourner Do at this morning's weigh-in. I just want the weigh-in to be on time, and, and that's all. I'm, we went to the press conference, we had to wait 40 minutes for him to, to turn up dressed like Tiny Tim. So, yeah, this time we just want to get in and we want to get out of here. We've, we've done what we had to do. We made the wait last night, and 